Итак, в синий угол добро пожаловать боец из России. Встречайте, Мухаммед Перхамов! So we are set for our main event here. And what a main event it is. Mohamed Berkhamov making his way to the cage now, an undefeated fighter. And every single stage of his ACB career, they've thrown questions at him. Last fight was against Jesse Taylor. He was massively outsized. Hugely uh, on the experience front outside matched as well. But went through that fight, cut through Jesse Taylor. I managed to get the submission finish in the, in the first round, which has earned him this headline fight. As a prospect and as somebody who's not huge for this division, this is an exciting fight to see coming into this cage right now, isn't it? Very slick guy, very young, but at the same time, very complete. You see that fight with Jesse Taylor, fighting a guy who's very veteran, very big, very strong, and it made it look like uh, there was, uh, that he was the veteran. Being out there, was able to, in a quick scramble, Jesse shot it on the legs, he took the guillotine and, and Jesse had no opportunity but just to tap. It was razor sharp and quickly too. Uh, Muhammad is uh, a very impressive fighter. This fight is very calm demeanor there. A fast starter as well. Seven first round finishes. Interestingly enough, after one of his wins a couple of fights ago, he called out Sergei Kandoshko. He asked for that fight in Moscow, I believe. And that's interesting as this fight comes around because the fighter he's taking on, Sharaf Davlat Maradov, is one of Sergei's best friends and main training partners, so I'm sure Sharaf was itching to get this bout. And next to the cage, Sharaf Devlat Maradov. His last fight, ACB 49, before his fight, he spoke to me, he said there's a card in Tajikistan coming up next year. I want to be part of it. He was born in Tajikistan, lived most his life in Russia. But listen to that reception. This means the world to him coming back here and headline. It's, it's what dreams are made of, coming back to your home country and headlining a fight in front of your home crowd. And truly, I mean, nothing really inspires a group of people to come watch a fight than having somebody from their hometown, somebody that they can relate to that's one of their own, essentially, uh, to support and come behind. And you've seen that make leaps and bounds in different areas. I mean, Canada got on board when George St. Pierre became a force. Ireland, so uh, kind of a fan of MMA right now because of one man in particular, and I think yeah, Conor sure. McGregor. Uh, um, and now you see here, everybody's excited. You know, Tajikistan, you know, is very uh, happy to have somebody they can call their own stepping in here who's a real legitimate mixed martial artist who tonight, really, one of these guys is going to emerge as a super contender for the title. And uh, another fighter that I love the backstory to as well. Three, he's not just your average battery, he holds three degrees. He's a, he got a degree in engineering, he's a fully qualified lawyer, and he has a degree to teach engineering. And alongside that, he is also an active soldier in the, uh, in the military as well. So he lives his life to the full. Not just a brawler, not just somebody, but an academic as well. And a real ambassador for the sport. Both these fighters are both young, both carry themselves very well. And both carry the sport as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you have been waiting for. ACB League is a sensation with double up fight. Proud to present the main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds, welterweight contest. Главный судья, main judge, Ахмед Байсултанов. Судьи у клетки, Магомед Магомедов и Роман Жолобов.
Ваш судья хронометрист, your timekeeper, Давлад Абдул Заде. И суда нам гонга ваш рефери в клетке. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge, Ашон Ашукан. Итак, дамы и господа на трибунах, миллионы фанатов смешанных единоборств во всем мире в прямом эфире на телеканале Бокс ТВ. С арены государственного цирка Таджикистана главный бой вечера! Ladies and gentlemen and attendants and the millions of MMA fans around the world live from National Cirque Arena of Таджикистан. The main bout of the evening. Представляю вам соперника и первый бойца в синем углу. Introducing first fighting under the blue corner. Ему 23 года. Рост 180 сантиметров. Вес 77,3 килограмма. 23 years old. He stands 180 centimeters tall. Official weight 77,3 kilograms. Его профессиональный рекорд не знает поражений. 10 боев, 10 побед. Его стиль бразильское джоу-джитсу. His professional record, 10 bouts, 10 victories, no losses. His style at Brazilian jiu-jitsu, представляющий боксан Россия, Махамед Перхама. И его соперник в красном углу. And his opponent fighting under the red corner. Бойцу 24 года. Рост 180 сантиметров, вес 77,6 килограмма. 24 years old, he stands 180 centimeters tall, official weight 77.6 kilograms. Профессиональный рекорд, также без поражений. 11 боев, 11 побед. His professional order, also undefeated. 11 pounds, 11 victories. Его стиль ММА, дамы и господа. Из Барнаула, представляющий Россию и Таджикистан, встречайте, Шараф Дафа Бурфада! Бойцы на середине. Внимательно слушаем, после команды стоп не работаем. Все действия по правилам все знаете. Пожали руки. Удачи. Не знающий поражений, но из клетки победителя выйдет только один. Oh, ring announcer Alexander Zidovsky doing a great job all night yet again. But we are set for our main event. Berkamov. Again, something going on with the match there just before we start. Berkamov in the blue corner. Sheriff Davlat Maradov in the red. We talked about Ibrahim, the matchmaker, not putting any easy fights on for any of their up-and-coming stars. This is two of their up-and-coming stars matched. Somebody's own will go. Big kick there. Sheriff looking for the takedown early. Well, he was able to reach that far ankle, grabbed it off the single to drop him down. Very efficient way to finish that shot. Basically a sweep single, essentially the finishing of it. Well, now he's got the guillotine locked up. Oh, he's going to drive his chest out and his hips forward. There we go. They did a little do -si do for us there just to get started. The come off sw switching stances southpaw here at the minute. Nice body shot from Sheriff. Interesting to see him take Berkhamov down. We've seen the dangerous jiu-jitsu game Berkhamov's got. And if anything, Berkhamov looks to be the bigger fighter in this fight compared to him uh, in other contests. Sharaf again looking to clinch. A good chunk of his camp out of Thailand. They, uh, sorry, top team Phuket. Edward Vartanian was out there as well. Sergey Honda, one of his main training partners. Brendan Lockney was out there. Andrew Defence as well took the trip out to town, so a real mat of killers, all looking to peak around the same time. <laughs> at the start, I was thinking we'd get out of uh, Shara. Ooh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Drop down to the single. Did he just trap the right arm there, is that? He did, he turned the corner, 
uh, an arm drag essentially. It didn't use it to finish the takedown, but used it to expose the hip and was able to get in on the legs of Sarah. Lots of flying hips in for Sharaf. The Tajikistan crowd here, willing on their hometown fighter. Sharaf is doing a good job using the butterfly hooks effectively. You have to keep pressure to keep him attached. So that way when your opponent tries to back his legs out, tries to move, he's essentially, his leg is still stuck. He can't step back far enough. And if he does too far, you can use him to elevate. And, and now that moment you're gonna be looking for a post. But honestly, it's hard to sweep with the butterfly guard where Sharaf is right now because you're really gonna be bringing the guy in 45 degree angles over your shoulders. Well, the cage is there, so it makes it a, a really a hard feat. Instead, usually guys use the butterfly guard here to push off, create room to get a stand up. Big shots from Berkimov coming down. He's cut open, Sharaf. That is a huge cut on the forehead. The referee's already asked for the doctor. We'll be looking at that. Big cut right on the hairline there of Sharaf. Sharaf is trying to lock up a deep half guard type uh, hold there on the legs going underneath. But because uh, Muhammad has his right leg, uh, Sharaf's right leg trapped with an underhook with his left arm, he's not going to be able to dip underneath or rotate back up. And really holding on is only getting him to receive more punishment. And he's trapping his left arm. It's no longer of use to him. Going for the knee bar now, trying to switch it up. All right, he can go for that heel hook. But the other leg of Muhammad needs to be trapped in some way to compromise his balance. Otherwise, he's going to establish position here and rain down some uh, heavy, heavy leather and some more elbows. Nice. Not a bit of a calf slice or something. I think he was just grabbing on to something, to be honest with you. But I could be wrong. I mean, I was, I was submission is known. Listen to the crowd game behind Shira. Lots of blood coming out there. Muhammad. His face is painted, and Sharaf's responded by getting to his feet and shaking off shit. Where oh, well, the blood could now work against Mohammed. He's cut his opponent, but now he's underneath the them. All that blood's going in his face, in his eyes, compromising his view. His, you know, breathing gets thrown off a little bit as you have, you know, liquid dripping down on your face. Big, big elbow there from the bottom, but... Sharaf is painting this canvas and his opponent with that head, with the cut on the head. Lots of words for the doctor to do it. That is a huge cut. That is, a, I'd be interested to see the doctors have a look at this. Great exchange there, here you see that Sharaf has that single, used the shin on his own thigh to leverage him up, drop down, was able to sweep the fight and get the ankle. Here, just using some dirty boxing, used the shoulder to bump in the clinch. Great top position control from Mohammed. It was able to really land a significant elbow from on top that is going to have a uh, significance throughout this fight. It's already having significance. The doctor is, has had a look at it now. They're working on that cut. Deep breath for Bahamed, who's wearing the blood of his opponent there, looking across the cage to see how he's doing. We are set for this second round to take place. Final. Bit of work there done by the cut man in the corner. The Sheriff Devlet Maradov. I mean, right now it's not bleeding, but uh, the first contact, it's going to open right up again. The comment. Oh, big body kick from Sheriff there. Welcome up in the blue corner, Sheriff in the red corner. They were both red a minute ago. Let's see if Mohammed looks. Oh, watch out for this guillotine now, but no. 
Well, and right now he's actually in a great position. Uh, for what I'm about to say next, he wants to be able to open that cut up again as soon as possible. And now he could be in a position to go ahead and throw a, an elbow from the bottom and try to wipe off whatever the doctor's done, you know, the, the Vaseline the, uh, to, to close up the, the hold, possibly uh, reopen it again. Well, he's actually using almost... Muhammad almost had a, a, a lasso card without the gi. He was able to step over the bicep with like a bicep slicer. He used it for control and was able to put both hands on the other arm. That was pretty impressive work from the bottom there using jiu-jitsu. Very, very dangerous jiu-jitsu player. But as the blood starts to come out of the head of Sharaf now, making them slippier and slippier. So those yeah, constricted right. moves are now... That chipping elbow right there. Now he's turns over an arm bar. Oh, and he's swung him around. Look at that. Wow. Threatened with the arm bar. Sharaf rolled into it and ended up on top. Only one minute 40 this round gone so far. Sharaf driving forward right now. It keeps the very hard for Muhammad to stand up, but makes him susceptible to being swept or submission. Now he has more of a neutral posture. Make it easier of an arm bar attempt starts to occur or if he loses control of Muhammad's hips, he'll be able to posture up and pull away from anything tight wrapping around his arms. Short work going in from Sharaf, keeping active on top. That's an unusual grip that he has with the hand there. I'm curious to see what he's going to do with it. Second time he's throwing it up. It looks like he's trying to trap that right. Well, arm. I think he's going to fake for that and go for the other arm. Yep. He's got his hips out. He's locked it up. Now it's the other arm. And now he's he has to it. Him. Oh, he's tapping. He did tap. Wow, that was slick. Look, wow, that was slick. He had the grip on. Uh, explain that to me. He well, had he put hands two hands on the one, <laughs> used his 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 rib cage and his left basically tricep to trap the uh, right arm of uh, Sharif Sharaf, and then rotated out and basically then once he popped the leg over the head, had the arm bar. He set it up by putting both hands on the one, then once he jumped over, the arm was so deep, and by the time that, that was the first rotation, he was very close there, but Sharaf was able to roll forward and avoid the head being trapped. Here we see the setup for the second one. Here we go. That's Here we the go. of it. He had and him there. He definitely tapped there. Oh, no doubt. Referee on top of that. No complaints from Sharaf as well. But what excellent display of jiu-jitsu once again. He had some interesting handles from display. the bottom. A stunning display from uh, Berkamov. Yet again showing how dangerous he is from the bottom. What an amazing jiu-jitsu game he's got. And he's just taken out Sheriff Devlet Muradov, which is no mean feat. We have been treated to some amazing fights here, some amazing technique. But that setup was beautiful. Время остановки боя 2 минуты 42 секунды второго раунда. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time. 2 minutes and 42 seconds of round number 2. Болевым приемом на руку. Победу одержал and your winner by submission victory, Mohamed Berkhamov! And what a victory that was. И аплодисменты его сопернику Шарафу Давлад Муродову. And a great response for Sharaf Dablat Marado from the Tuzbekistan fans here. Slova Pamidicilu. Не судите строго, Sharaf. Он мой брат. Как вы все тут, иншаллах. Хотелось бы пару слов сказать благодарности дорогому, уважаемому одному человеку, который очень многое делает. В России для спорта это наш дорогой Рамзан Ахматович Кадыров. Спасибо, Рамзан Ахматович, за все. И также хотелось бы поблагодарить клуб Ахмат, которым я провел последние тренировочные сборы. Спасибо, братья, все, кто меня поддерживает. 
и спортивный клуб Ахмат. Спасибо, что вы есть. Спортивный клуб Рамзан, то есть спасибо всем. И ваши аплодисменты, Мохаммед Берхамов. И так вот так завершился, дамы и господа, 55-й международный турнир ACB по смешанным единоборствам в Таджикистане. Хочу представить наших комментаторов, которые вели репортаж на западные телеканалы. Это Брайан Лейси from Great Britain и бывший чемпион UFC в тяжелом весе and former UFC heavyweight champion Фрэнк Мир. Итак, дамы и господа, наш турнир завершен, но организаторы не прощаются с вами. Они говорят вам до свидания и приглашают вас на свои будущие события и объявления. Завтра в 16.00 на этой арене, арене государственного цирка Таджикистана, состоится битва чемпионов. Турнир силовых структур по боевому самбо. Добро пожаловать! Ваш ринг-анонсер Александр Загорский, Санкт-Петербург, Россия. Спасибо! Спасибо, Таджикистан! Мира и добра! What a great job there from Alexander Zagovsky, sending us out on an amazing event. Berkamov there saying to his fans, saying to the Tajikistan people, uh, do, not f um, do not be upset about Sharaf, he will be back. He is my brother, as you are all. He was uh, happy about his training camp, happy about that performance, but thanks to the people of Tajikistan for welcoming him here uh, and allowing him to show his skills on this platform and what skills they were as well. Once he locked up uh, the arm by the speed at which Sharaf tapped, that says it all, doesn't it? He had it locked up, and the setup. Some of the grips already identified when he stepped over and kind of did a, a bicep slicer type of setup, but used it for control from the bottom. And then, again, I've seen guys, I've used it myself, from the mount, you'll go and attack one arm like the Americana, and then that way you'll swing around an arm by the other side. And he essentially did that from the bottom, and I honestly have never seen that applied in MMA, where you lock up the one side with both hands, pivot out, and throw up. It just shows the evolution of our sport that we're seeing new ways to put grips and handles and transitions between strikes and takedowns and submissions and setups and it's constantly uh, just evolving and becoming more beautiful and impressive as days go by. And that is the cherry on the top of this event because it has been a fantastic event here at the circus in the Shambit Uzbekistan. It's been Frank Mir alongside me, Brian Lacey, calling the action back on uh, April 15th. You can check out amazing card in Moscow, ACB 57. We've got Magomed Magomedov taking on Peter Yan alongside some other title fights. Our Abdul Aziz will be defending his title as well. We've had a great time calling it. Keep up with the action at ACB Berkut on Facebook, at ACB underscore league. You can follow Frank Mir as well. The Frank Mir, I believe, is that correct? Yeah, Frank Mir there, and a phone booth fighting. And phone booth fighting, check him out. You can follow me at Brian Lacey MMA and the One Punch Podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. We'll be back once again. Thanks for having us, Tajikistan. We're out.